Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, January 9th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jesse today went over the user agents that he found in his honeypod logs, how to parse them and what to learn from these user agents. Of course, there are some user agents that are pretty obvious, like some of these internet-wide research projects use specific user agents identifying them. Then we also do have user agents that do look like normal browsers, but quite often turn out to be spoofed user agents. Jesse goes over how to parse user agents, which isn't quite as straightforward as it probably could be based on sort of a bunch of variations that can show up in the user agent format. And then also how to learn whether or not a user agent is likely fake or whether it is the actual user agent used by the particular tool being used to scan the honeypot. Of course, given that we are dealing with honeypot data, that guesswork is a little bit easier. It's probably not a normal web browser that is visiting a honeypot website. And one thing that I personally found useful in particular in the past when you had to defend against denial of service attacks is to basically just look at very old user agents. So for example, Google Chrome versions before 100 and such, which often turn out to be spoofed. I talked a couple times over the last few years about the efforts led by NIST to find a new standard cryptographic algorithm that is quantum safe. And this is a lengthy process and there is lots of work being done to make sure that the algorithm selected will be safe. And just well, how difficult this can be shows a vulnerability was discovered, actually two different vulnerabilities discovered in Chris. Crystal Skyper. Crystal Skyper is a key encapsulation mechanism that is part of these algorithms being investigated by the National Institute of Standards and Technology or NIST. And well, the implementation of some of these algorithms have shown some timing vulnerabilities. So what we talk about here is not a vulnerability of the algorithm itself, but instead a vulnerability in the encryption implementation. And the problem here is actually quite common for many cipher has happened in many implementations before. The problem is that how fast it takes to encrypt or decrypt something may depend on the content of what you're actually decrypting or on the encryption key being used. So by observing how long it takes to perform the encryption, you may be able to derive the key or the content. And this is exactly what happened here with Kuiper. There are two divisions in the algorithm. So you have to divide two numbers. One of these numbers is actually fixed. It's publicly known. The other number is part of the key. And divisions can take quite substantially different amounts of of time depending on what numbers you are dividing. Just imagine if you're dividing something by two, this could be as simple as a bit shift. If you are dividing by other numbers, well, this may take more time. And this is exactly what's happening here. Patches are on the way for affected implementations. And there is now a web page that also has some more details and proof of concept code. Apparently, it can take uh, only like two out of three attempts to actually observe uh, the encryption operation with identical keys to then uh, figure out what the key is. Luckily, these algorithms aren't really widely implemented yet. Uh, there are a couple implementations of end-to-end encryption systems that are using them in at least one case what stated that they're not vulnerable because they don't use the same key twice. So you can actually play the game of observing encryption and timing it uh, multiple times using the same key. And then we've got a couple of vulnerabilities to talk about. Uh, first one is a uh, Linux kernel vulnerability. Actually, it's the NetFilter component. The main reason I mention it is because we had a number of NetFilter-based vulnerabilities in the last couple of years. This one is only a denial-of-service vulnerability in that a normal user 
is able to crash the system, CVE 2024-0193. QNAP also fixed a denial of service vulnerability. This one is exploitable remotely, CVE 2023-39296. It's described as the ability to override system attributes, not really exactly known what this entails, but patches are available. And lastly, and probably most important vulnerability here is a remote code execution vulnerability in CACTI, the graphic display system. So that's definitely something that you do want to patch. If you have one of these servers publicly exposed, it's a SQL injection vulnerability. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and thanks for recommending this podcast to all your friends and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.